morning, everyone, and welcome to the second quarter 2021 earnings conference call for Light in the Box Holding Co Limited. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the call over to Mr. Rene Angestein for opening remarks and introduction. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Ray. Hello, everyone, <coughs> and welcome to Light in the Box second quarter 2021 earnings conference call. The company's earnings results were released earlier today and are available on the company's IR website as well as through PR Newswire. Today you will hear from Light in the Box CEO Mr. Jan He, who will give an overview of the company's strategies and recent developments, followed by Ms. Wang Jun Ye, the company's chief financial officer, who will go over the financial results. Together with them today is Min Wen Yu Liu, the company's chief growth officer. All will be available for the Q&A after the prepared remarks. Before we proceed, I would like to remind you of our safe harbor statement. Please note that the discussion today may contain certain forward-looking statements made under the safe harbor provisions of the U.S. Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. These forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties that may cause actual results to differ materially from all current expectations. To understand the factors that could cause results to materially differ from those in the forward-looking statements, please refer to our Form 20F filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission on April 21, 2021. We do not assume any obligation to update any forward-looking statements except as required under applicable law. <laughs> At this point, I'd like to turn the call over to Mr. Herr. Mr. Herr, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Lena, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, following a solid first quarter, we continued to achieve stable year-over-year -year growth in the second quarter. Total revenue reached $122.2 million up 7.3% from the same period of 2020. Our gross profit margin in Q2 was 46.8%, higher than 43.5% in the same period of 2020. While adjusted EBITDA grow by 59% year over year. Total revenues from, for the first half of this year were 234.2 million representing a 41.6% increase from the first half of 2020. From the macro perspective, as the vaccination rates around the world increase, people are engaging in more outdoor and social activities with family and friends, as well as offline shopping at retail stores and malls. It's a good phenomenon, and we are pleased to see this happen. In the long run, we believe that online and offline shopping can complement each other for a better shopping experience. Overall speaking, our sales in Q2 continued to sustain a healthy growth momentum. Product sales increased by 11% year over year. Notably, apparel sales increased by 149% and it's our top category contributing 62% of total product sales in Q2, compared with 28% in Q2 last year. For the first half of the year, apparel sales grew by 56% from the same period of last year. The solid performance is attributable to our enriched and select product portfolio, and our continuous efforts in enhancing our customers' shopping experience. On the other hand, we believe that investing in R&D is a critical element that fuels our solid position to stand out from the field competition. Our R&D expense increased by 52% year over year to 5.1 million in Q2, 
as we continued to strengthen our R&D capabilities. The pandemic has accelerated the shift towards online shopping, but at the same time, it has attracted more competition to the e-commerce space from new and established players. Right now, we are still facing the economic uncertainties, partly due to the resurgence of coronavirus in a number of countries. We will continue, as in the past quarters, to implement the strategies to enhance our platform to be more responsive and user-friendly so that the customer will enjoy the comprehensive product selections and the convenience of online shopping, even more on our websites and the mobile app. I will now turn the call over to Yuan Jun to go through the financial results. Thank you, Mr. He, and thank you everyone for joining the call. I will now review our financial results for the second quarter. Please be reminded that all numbers quoted are in U.S. dollars. Total revenue was $122.2 million, up 7.3% year-over-year from $113.9 million. This was mainly driven by strong growth in product sales, which were $119.3 million versus $107.2 million in the same period in 2020. Revenues from services and others were $2.9 million, compared with $6.7 million. Included in product sales, revenues from apparel increased by 149% to 40, 40, uh, 74 million in the second quarter of 2021, compared with 29.7 million in the same quarter of 2020. Gross profit was 57.1 million, compared with 49.6 million during the same period last year. Gross margin was 46.8% up from 43.5% the same quarter of 2020, primarily due to our continued efforts to optimize supply chain and product mix. Total operating expenses was 60.6 million, compared with 41.4 million during the same quarter of 2020. The increase was mainly due to an increase in selling and marketing expenses. Fulfillment expenses was 7.6 million, compared with 7.4 million in the same quarter of 2020. As a percentage of total revenues, fulfillment expenses were 6.2% compared with 6.5% in the same quarter of 2020 and 6.5% in the first quarter of 2021. Selling and marketing expenses were 43.5 million compared with 26.5 million in the same quarter of 2020. As a percentage of total revenue, selling and marketing expenses were 35.6% compared with 23.3% in the same quarter of 2020 and 31.8% in the first quarter of 2021. The increase was due to the high expenses for online advertising from leading ad providers. GNA expenses were $9.5 million compared with $7.5 million in the same quarter of 2020. As a percentage of total revenue, GNA expenses were 7.8% compared with 6.6% in the same quarter of 2020 and 7.5% in the first quarter of 2021. Included in the GNA expenses, R&D expenses were 5.1 million compared with 3.3 million in the same quarter of 2020 and 4.9 million in the first quarter of 2021. Other income net in the second quarter of 2021 was 17.2 million, compared with 0.3 million in the same quarter of 2020. Included in other income net in the second quarter of 2021, 17.1 million was derived from change in fair value on our equity investment. The gain in fair value change on our equity investment after respective income tax of 4.2 million was 12.9 million. Net income was 9.5 million compared with 8.5 million in the same quarter of 2020. Net income per ADS was 8 cents compared with 8 cents in the same quarter of 2020. Adjusted EBITDA, which represents income from operations before share-based compensation expense, interest income, interest expense, 
income tax expense, depreciation and amortization expenses were 14.5 million in the second quarter of 2021, compared with 9.1 million in the same quarter of 2020. As of June 30, 2021, we had cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash of 58.2 million, compared with 65.5 million as of December 31, 2020. Our revenue growth and net income in the past quarters have validated our well-established growth strategies as we continue to maintain business continuity in unprecedented time. Over the next quarter, we expect to continue to face challenges in highly competitive markets, and we will continue to implement our long-term growth strategies to optimize user experience across our platforms and mobile apps. The commitment of our experienced management team leading our operations and our R&D and technology innovation have given us the solid foundation we need to stay well positioned in the industry. However, it is unlikely to reasonably determine whether any business fluctuations in the midst of the current economic dynamics are likely to materially affect our operations. To focus on long-term goals and avoid overly underlying short-term objectives, we will not provide revenue guidance for the third quarter of 2021. This concludes our prepared remarks. At this point, we are ready to take some questions. Operator? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. To be cancelled a request, please press the pound or hash key. Once again, to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone. Thank you. The first question comes from the line of Matthew Larson from National. Please go ahead. Okay, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, good evening to you all. Uh, okay, it was nice to see the uh, uh, top line growth and uh, bottom line. Uh, I guess the bottom line, a lot of it um, uh, derived from uh, a derivative revaluation. What does that emanate from? Um, it is the investment gain. So on what, I guess? Uh, what's the investment? Hi, hi uh, Mr. Matthew Larson. Um, this is an investment on a uh, company, um, you know, that we invested uh, several years ago whose business was on um, okay. selling, uh, selling cosmetic products. Okay, so it's a related business. It's retail. Uh, and uh, do you maintain that business uh, investment exposure? So that could uh, impact uh, hopefully positively in the future just as it did this quarter? Uh, we are just a uh, shareholder. We do not maintain the business in this investment equity. Okay, right. But it's a shareholder of a retail type of uh, business, which you're familiar with. Uh, it's uh, cosmetics. So uh, it's part of uh, the uh, assets on your balance sheet. Is that in addition to the cash, uh, the, the, the 50 uh, some odd million you have in cash? You also have uh, securities uh, in 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 this business as well. Uh, is that accurate? Okay. Um, this um, investment again is based on um, the company you know which raised capital and the our initial investment you know gained this. Um, you know, the book value uh, was increased according to the new um, equity rate in this company. 
Right, but the gain is quite nice, and there's nothing, you know, it's always good to have investments in addition to cash because you have plenty of cash on the balance sheet. But uh, uh, the investment seems to be working quite well. So I'm trying to get a sense of uh, what you have, uh, you know, assets on the balance sheet since you don't have any debt. You have cash, you have this investment in this uh, uh, this company, and what is the total value of your investment if you could, you know, gauge it uh, uh, based on the, you know, at the end of the second quarter? Um, the total value of this company, I think it's not a, an available information that we could disclose. Um, the the long-term investment that you are seeing on our balance sheet um, was valued according to the U.S. gap uh, with the relative methodology. Um, it, it's not you know totally equivalent to um, to the value of the co of this investment company. Okay, but it went up. Uh 12 to 13 million. So it must, uh, in the aggregates, the value in the investment uh, must be more than that. So it just allows me to get a better sense of, you know, uh, the value of your company in addition to the operating uh, value, uh, you know, that you can be, you know, that we can place on you all because of your uh, revenue generating capabilities. Yes, uh, as we are only a minor shareholder, and we are in different markets, so the methodology behind um, is a uh, it, it's quite different. So um, it, it's really hard to to explain, you know, um, you know, uh, to or to compare the the value of this investment company. But okay. what you can uh, what well. what, what you there. can see. Okay, uh, please go ahead. Well, I was just saying that uh, uh, if if we could get a sense of the uh, value of your investments, you know, that you might have made a while ago, the current value based on, you know, a gap accounting, uh, it, we would be able to uh, add that to, you know, your book value or just, you know, as an investor that I, I, I represent uh, – a number of investors that have a pretty good exposure to your company, and this is a plus. I didn't know you had other assets that uh, could, you know, really help help the over, overall value of Light in the Box in addition to, you know, the cash you have and the uh, the top line operating uh, capabilities of your firm. And uh, so this was a, 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 a plus that uh, obviously is working well for you. Um, okay, so uh, in addition, um, the uh, guidance, you're not going to put it out. As, uh, as you said, it's very competitive and uh, things in the PRC you know, are still being impacted like they are elsewhere with COVID and things like that. But um, the, um, uh, you know, retail is a very competitive business anyway. You, you all have done extremely well over the last year. You've had four quarters, I believe, in a row where you've doubled your uh, previous year's revenues. Uh, this year you did not because last year was a tough comparison, but you still did better, which was very nice. Um, on an operating basis, you had a small you know, loss, and the, uh, the breakout that I could see was that the SG&A uh, went up to 43.5 from 26.5. So obviously that's up quite a bit. Uh, is that due to uh, higher costs for sourcing, you know, because of shipping costs and uh, other things like that, that might abate so that the uh, uh, SG&A might be less of a percentage going forward? Oh, okay. Hello? Thank you for your question. Yeah, hi. Okay, so for GNA expenses, the absolute value will remain um, uh, most likely stable. 
so if the revenue continue to grow in terms of uh, GNA expenses percentage, will definitely decrease. Yeah, because the uh, the revenue grew seven percent, which was great because last year it was up, uh, you know, hundred percent maybe. And so, but last year you were able to achieve that with SG&A of twenty six and a half million. This quarter it was forty three and a half million. So there was a big jump there, and uh, and of course that that hurts your bottom line. But is the SG&A in the future expected to, you know, maybe be more contained relative to your revenue, or your top line capabilities. So can we expect that to be, uh, you know, less as a percentage of overall sales? Uh, yes, we, we, we can. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, you, so uh, again, just so I'm very clear, because um, you know your your news releases are pretty, uh, you know, basic. The SG&A jumped 17 million from 26 and a half to 43 and a half, uh, which was up, uh, you know, 60 or 70 percent. Sales were up seven percent. So. Uh, is the jump in SG&A for, you know, what reasons? I, I, I know here in the U.S. that uh, there is bottlenecks and the costs of containers of ships coming from uh, Asia, China to the U.S. carrying goods, you know, have jumped considerably in price. So, so costs have gone up, uh, uh, which, you know, it is for everybody. Is that the case with you? Uh, and if so, if these, uh, uh, if the tightness uh, for many things uh, slows down, uh, would your SG&A become less of a percentage of your overall sales, so that it could fall, uh, your sales could fall to the bottom line, and you know we could see greater profitability. Okay, um, for the absolute value, as you have mentioned, there's a jump as compared to last year. There are two reasons. One was because last year we had um, some subsidies from the government due to COVID-19, um, but this year there's no more uh, that kind of subsidies. The other reason was caused by uh, R&D expenses, as mentioned uh, just now. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that, that makes sense to me. The R&D went up fractionally, and it's important that you continue to invest, you know, in your platform. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. this number will, will then, remain so, relatively stable. This number what? I'm sorry? This number will remain um, stable in future, at least for this year, for this okay. year. Okay. Mm. Okay, well that's that's good to know. So if you can, you know, continue to grow, you we, the real what you I'm driving at is your company uh, after many years, uh, after you went public, you know, uh, kind of flatlined. But uh, you're all of a sudden your your top line and uh, growth, your revenue has been ex excellent, and uh, uh, so you're benefiting from. Uh, you know, more and more people uh, focusing on uh, making purchases online versus elsewhere. Uh, now, you did withhold guidance. Is it just because it's hard for you to figure it out, or uh, is uh, you're just uh, is it slowing down, or uh, what? Uh, uh, you know what? What is the reason why? Because in the past, you've been able to give guidance, and we're already. Uh, almost at the end of the quarter. Okay, for this quarter, honestly speaking, there's some uncertainties we are facing right now. Uh, as mentioned just now by uh, our CFO, um, so it's, 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 yeah, it's unlikely we can, we can provide uh, accurate guidance right now. Okay, uh, and when you do, uh, have that ability? Will you announce it prior to 
uh, earnings announcements, uh, you know, but you can give guidance, you know, you can pre-announce those types of things. Uh, I think uh, we are not planning to have another release, but uh, we will try to have an early release for Q3 quarterly report. Okay, and then um, maybe finally, uh, do you uh, do you expect to be profitable for the year, or is uh, that uh, based also on the uh, other investment that you know changes in value? Um, we we can't we can't predict uh, the the final profitability for the whole year. Uh, what we are uh, what we know now is the first two quarters result. I see. So, okay, you, you only know uh, what you've done so far, but you can't predict the rest of the year. And is that your company, or is that uh, you find with a lot of uh, uh, online retail, uh, you know, companies like yourself in the PRC? Is that just what most of... Uh, your competitors uh, are probably not able to do? Um, maybe, um, okay, allow me to give you a few reasons. Um, first of all, as mentioned just now, um, due to the macro environment, the vaccine region, uh, vaccination rate keeps increasing and people are more engaged in outdoor activities um, as a result. I believe online portion um, gets affected. Um, in fact, other other players also observe the similar trend. This is one reason. Uh, the second reason will be yes, as you have mentioned, there are many new players um, joining cross-border e-commerce industry, so which did impose um, some new challenges as well as the com uh, competition. Besides, we are also facing some uncertainties in certain countries due to the impact of COVID-19. Um, as a result, um, it's, it's um, a bit hard for us to predict uh, the guidance for Q3 as well as the whole year. Okay, but you do expect to be profitable for the whole year. Uh, no, we, we can't. We can't make. Me ten cent. We can't make this conclusion right now. We can't make any predictions. Yes, we can't. Okay. All right, uh, because you know your company is extremely uh, uh, undervalued uh, relative to many other uh, online uh, merchants. Um, uh, you know, your the, the value of your company is only about one quarter to one third of sales, which is very unusual. I mean, generally uh, uh, companies in your, uh, uh, with your business model trade at uh, two or three times sales. Uh, and in addition, you have a very, very solid and uh, robust, uh, good, you know, very, an excellent balance sheet so that uh, that is, you know, very comfortable for investors. Uh, so it's just a question of, you all being able to pull your uh, top line sales to the bottom line uh, because the the value of your stock is so low. Uh, let me ask a final question. I mean, is is uh, the, uh, the, the the principles of the firm are you happy? Are you all happy with your stock price, or you know, are, do you do you want it to go up? Is that uh, an interest of yours? Because uh, it is down, um, you know, seventy or eighty percent from its high. Uh, even though your your revenues have con continued to grow and you have a very clean balance sheet, do you, do you have any uh, interest or uh, of trying to get the stock price higher through buybacks or you know other measures, acquisitions? 
Okay. Uh, first of all, Matthew, I, I think we we do appreciate that you have um you have done a lot of analysis on on, on this company um and as well as this market. We, we do appreciate that, uh, and I do appreciate that you see the value in this company. Um, but uh, for the stock price, we we don't have any comments right now. As for whether we want to um, drive up the stock price, uh, I think it's a, another topic. Um, um, yeah, this is a good question, and um, we will we will we will bring this to our board and and initiate some discussion. Uh, at the same time, I think if you have any further question, we can keep in touch after the call. Uh, you can send our email address uh, from IRS website. Uh, we do appreciate whatever you have uh, asked or whatever you have suggested. Okay, I'll uh, appreciate that. I'll let somebody else uh, uh, jump in here if there's people waiting. Thank you for your time. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, please press start one on your telephone. Once again, to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone. Thank you. Thank you. I will now hand the call back to Mr. Renee Rangerstein for any closing remarks, so please go ahead. Thank you, Ray. This concludes our call for today. Thank you for your participation and ongoing support of Light in the Box. We look forward to providing you with updates on our business in the weeks and months ahead. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. That concludes our conference for today. Thank you for your participation. You may all disconnect your lines now. Thank you.